research and ethical framework, but we've always been moving forward progressively until President George W. Bush. And it's been a stark reversal, not only in cutting budgets for the main funders of science and research, but waging this war on science, which is very discouraging to young people and to people with good ideas. You know, if the president is ignoring scientists and muzzling scientists and refusing to follow where the evidence leads, you know, you might say to yourself, well, what's the point, you know? Then there's another problem, is that especially when it comes to energy and global climate change, where I think we have an opportunity to create millions of new jobs, the president is stuck in the past. Everything is about supporting oil companies. And there might have been a reason in the past to support the discovery, exploration, extraction of oil. But when oil is 70 and 80 dollars a barrel, taxpayers don't need to be subsidizing them. We need to create a market for our alternative, clean, renewable forms of energy. And that's why I want to take the tax subsidies away from the oil companies and put them to work on behalf of solar and wind and <coughs> biomass and everything else we can imagine. It is interesting to me that uh, a lot of other countries are basically taking the technology we've invented and they're putting it to use and they're now exporting it back to us. I mean, when you look at wind turbines, a lot of the photovoltaic work, a lot of the uh, hybrid, uh, the long-term battery work, all of that has its roots in some you know, mind and laboratory right here in the United States in either a government-funded lab or a private sector-funded lab. But it's not any longer what we're emphasizing. So that's why I gave a speech about ending the war on science last Thursday on the 50th anniversary of Sputnik. That's why I'm talking about how we can have a clean energy future because I'm convinced we not only need to do this for our health, for our well-being, but for our economy. And I want more people like Kadar to feel this is the land of opportunity. We're also seeing some of the best and brightest minds in other countries no longer coming to the United States. You know, they're being, frankly, recruited to stay in their own countries or to go somewhere else. And we are actually losing scientists to countries like the United Kingdom, uh, to Singapore, who are saying, well, if America doesn't want me, if they don't want my research, if they don't want my education to be put to use, I'll go somewhere where they do. So this is a complicated set of interconnecting issues. But I'm convinced we can get back to having a strong, innovative agenda and really creating the millions of jobs that I think uh, will come from that uh, and putting more people like Kadar on the road to success uh, with a company like GT Solar. Now I want to turn now to Melanie, um, who is a state representative who has a background in uh, working for technology, information technology companies, and who in the uh, House of Representatives is playing an important role in looking at the future for technology in New Hampshire. Melanie. Thank you, Senator Clinton. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, and you basically said it, um, I'm the president of TCS of America, a telecommunications consulting company. I am a state legislator for Brookline, Hollis, and Mason, New Hampshire. I'm a wife and a mother and a volunteer. I'm proud to be all of those. Um, I, I'd like to just share a quick story with you because I had the senator sign a picture. It's a beautiful picture of Senator Clinton. And the way I received this picture was a dear friend of mine who is Republican had me sleep over her house, and in the spare bedroom was this beautiful picture in a frame. And thank you for signing it. I'd like to say that um, I'm, I'm very proud of Senator Clinton for running. I'm thinking about why I'm supporting you is, when I think about it, it's because of your passion that you have had since you were a child raising funds for the United Way, working for the Children's Defense Fund, and putting together a health care plan, and running for president. 
uh, that's huge for your, your also your um, background and your experience is something that really separates you from the pack. Being a senator, being the wife of a president who has met, been to 80 countries, over 80 countries, met many foreign leaders, she's been there, she has the experience. And then what was important that you said earlier about talking about the scientists was collaboration. I know that you will collaborate with people, the right people, to come up with the answers to the problems that are facing our country. And I do have to say, you're welcome. As a woman and as a professional, I have met many women who are very knowledgeable, very capable in my field that are vice presidents and CEOs and CIOs. But that is very few. And today, women still make about 70% of what a man does. When our daughters go to college, they still make less than their male counterparts. I have an 11-year-old daughter, and I want to be able to show her that if she is qualified and if she is capable, she can be anything that she wants to be, including President of the United States. Here. <laughs> I, I digress. Um, I am, a, as a small business owner, there's about 142,000 small businesses in New Hampshire. And one of the questions that I am asked from my counterparts that have small businesses is what more will you do for small businesses when you become president? Well, Melanie, thank you so much. And I'm going to stand because we're going to go to the audience um, next. And, you know, small businesses are the engine of economic growth in our country. And Melanie knows that, so do the 140,000 other small businesses in New Hampshire and the millions of small businesses around our country. And in the last, oh, I think it's probably 20 years or so, uh, small businesses have actually created about 80% of the job growth in America. Now, a business starts out small, like GT Solar, and it grows. How many employees now, Kato? More than 150. So it's moving into the bigger size, but it started out small. So what do we do to support small businesses and give them access to the credit that they need, the technical assistance that they might require, help them deal with a lot of the costs that uh, are part of doing business uh, today? And there are several ways that I think we can address this. My health care plan. The American Health Choices Plan is specifically designed with small businesses in mind. Uh, I know how hard it is for most small businesses to afford health care, even for the owners and the people who work um, very closely, maybe even if it's a family-owned business. So under the American Health Choices Plan, people are given choices. You, if you have health insurance, you are free to keep it. Absolutely no questions asked. If you're one of the 47 million uninsured, or one of the many millions who are, in effect, underinsured because they have an insurance policy, except the insurer won't pay when your doctor tells you what you need, or won't pay the hospital after you've gotten the service, uh, then you're free to pick a different plan by going into the congressional plan. You know, Congress has a very good health plan for itself and for federal employees. It has over 250 options. It is less expensive than what you can buy uh, as an employer uh, working to get health care for your employees, or certainly if you go into the individual market. And we're going to make that available to everyone. And in particular, we're going to help people, if they're individuals trying to afford health care, or if they're small businesses trying to do it, with health care tax credits. Because a lot of businesses can't afford it on their own. So we're putting together a plan and I've been very pleased that it's uh, been evaluated favorably by so many independent analysts. A plan that really does try to build on what works with our healthcare system and fix what doesn't work. That's one thing that I want to do that I think particularly will help small businesses. We also want to get back to having the Small Business Administration